Hi, this is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Iroshizuku Kujaku. I'll be doing a writing sample on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper using a variety of pens and nib sizes, ranging from a Pilot Extra Fine to a 1.5 stub nib. Now, I have to give the disclaimer here that teal and turquoise inks are notoriously difficult for representing correctly on video and I'm looking at Kujaku through my viewfinder and then looking at it in real life and it's a bit more green in real life. It's looking very bright and blue. Just be warned that Kujaku looks a bit more green in real life. So this video will be more about how the ink behaves and writes in different pens and on different papers. I'll compare Kujaku to similar inks from my collection, but like I just said, take that with a grain of salt. If you think Kujaku might be an ink that you're interested in, I recommend taking a look at it on something like inkswatch.com or look at it at whatever retailer you think you might purchase it from. A lot of the online retailers now have tools where you can compare inks. And finally, I'll take a look at the results of my water resistance test. Writing with Iroshizuku Kujaku was very pleasant using a glass dip nib. It felt very smooth and satisfying. In the initial scribble that I made, you can see it came off a bit quicker at the beginning, but then was pretty uniform after that. The swatch that I made with tweezers grabbed the paper nicely and was very crisp. It started out a bit darker and you can see it got a bit lighter toward the end. When I compare it to Sioro, Sioro was more uniform in color for the entire swatch. That just makes me think I might get a little bit more noticeable shading with Kujaku. The drip at the end of the swatch was a bit darker and I can see a bit of halo. It is slightly pink in real life. Let me turn it this way. I'm having trouble seeing the sheen on video, but around the edges I can see a bit of a, a pink sheen. I'm going to begin with my Pilot Kakuno. It has an extra fine stainless steel nib. The lines put down by this extra fine nib are very crisp and very legible and for an extra fine nib it felt very smooth. Next I'll be writing with the Faber-Castell Ambition. It also has an extra fine stainless steel nib. I don't remember noticing this before, but this Ambition Extra Fine nib has the same drier upstroke compared to all the other directions, similar to my Pilot 14 karat fine nibs. That was interesting. I don't notice it as much in the writing. I, I, it puts down a, a wet enough line that you don't notice those drier upstrokes. I like this Extra Fine nib especially for these smaller grids for smaller writing. It's very smooth. It's noticeably broader than the Pilot Extra Fine, but very smooth, and the lines are still very crisp, just a bit more broader than the Kakuno lines. And I think this can do reverse writing. Uh, no, not this nib. I have, it's a bit too dry. I have a broad Faber-Castell nib, a broad nib unit that writes very nicely in reverse. 
Next, I've got a Pilot Legno. It has a number three size, 14 karat fine nib. And you can see this nib has that same dryer upstroke. But this nib, it doesn't look like in the smear test it's that much wetter than the Ambition. I guess just the way the nib is ground and lays down ink, uh, it feels wetter. This nib is quite a bit more soft, I guess soft and bouncy compared to the Ambition nib. It's just very soft and smooth. Next, I'll be writing with a Sailor Lacool. It has a medium fine stainless steel nib. And this nib writes more uniform in every direction. The upstroke writes similar to the, all, all the other strokes. Now, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with this pen. For starters, I've always said I thought the nib was ugly. And certain inks just don't play as well with this nib. But when you get an ink that does work well, like this Orochizuku ink, this is a, a very nice pen and ink combination. And I think I did some work on the reverse of this nib. Yeah, this is really nice. I had to do a little smoothing on it, but I noticed that it was wet enough that I was thought it would be worth working on it. Now this medium fine, if you compare it to the Faber-Castell Extra Fine and the Legno Fine Nib, this medium fine is pretty fine already, and so the reverse is noticeably finer. Next, I've got a Platinum 3776. It has a 14 karat medium nib. Platinum nibs, similar to Sailor, are known for having a, a bit of feedback, and with this ink and on this smoother paper, the feedback was more audible. You might be able to hear that, but I didn't really feel it as much. It was pretty smooth. Now, not glassy smooth, like you feel like you're going to fly off the page, but just, just enough feedback to give you some control, and let me see the reverse writing here. Yeah, a little bit finer, a little bit drier than the medium nib. Yeah, that's nice. Both were very smooth. This platinum medium nib, I think it's my favorite of all the medium nibs I have. I just, I like the feel of it on the paper. It works well with a variety of inks on a variety of papers. Just a good all-around pen. In fact, I like this medium over my Pilot medium nibs. Next, I'll be writing with a Caveco Lily Put. It has a stainless steel broad nib. A broad nib like this isn't very practical for most of my uses, but this is just very fun. I just, I love this. When I do 
write letters, which isn't very often, this Caveco Broad Nib is my favorite. And with this ink, this nib and ink combination is just very fun. This Kujaku has just a little bit of pink sheen, and you can see it sometimes in this broad writing. And finally, I'll be writing with a Jinhao X750. It has a 1.5 stainless steel stub nib. Very luxurious and just smooth and beautiful to write with in this stub nib. All right, while this dries, we'll take a look at some of the other writing samples. On this Rhodia grid paper, everything was nice. Everything was smooth. The broader nibs felt velvety. I didn't see as much shading in the swatch as I did on the Tomoe River paper, but in some of the broader nibs, I'm seeing a little bit of shading. The shading is subtle, but just gives it a little bit of character. You just can't go wrong on good fountain pen quality paper with uh, this ink. Now, copy paper is not very well suited for fountain pen ink because it's so absorbent. And after writing on the Rhodia paper, that really kind of spoiled me. The broader nibs, the ink, you can kind of see it spreading as you're writing. So it felt okay to write with it. It was just not vi visually satisfying like it is to write on good fountain pen friendly paper. This platinum medium nib a lot of times feels nice to write with on copy paper. That medium nib kind of spreads the ink out so it doesn't feel like the ink is just going down in blobs. I was kind of surprised by my Sailor Le Cool though. A lot of times it feels nicer to write on poor quality paper than it does on the fountain pen friendly paper, but in my writing sample today, I preferred it on the Tomoe River and the Rhodia. Those were just exceptional. It doesn't look bad, but it just felt like it was going down in blobs. And the same thing with the Legno. And I find that a lot of times with my Pilot Gold Medium nibs. They're kind of wetter writing pens anyway, so the ink feels like it's going down in blobs. Same thing with the Ambition. It was just eh. I preferred the Kakuno. If I were wanting to write with a fine nib, I would go with that one. It felt nice, and it's such a fine line anyway that even if the ink does spread a little bit, you don't really notice it as much. So the Platinum Medium and the Kakuno Extra Fine were my favorite nibs on really poor quality paper. And it does tend to bleed through. This is a heavier copy paper, so I'm not seeing a lot of bleed through, but on really thin paper, you would probably see quite a bit more. I've got my writing samples of Sioro and Kujaku right beside each other here, and I was kind of surprised to see that the difference in color was not very noticeable here. I don't always show the writing sample that I do in my old Leuchtturm bullet journal, but we'll see how it shows up today. The shading was more noticeable on Kujaku than it was on Sioro. The lighter bits of Kujaku are a little bit brighter, so it makes the shading a bit more noticeable. And on this paper, with this broader, wetter nib, in real life, I'm able to catch little glimpses of that pink sheen. All three of these letters, I'm seeing a little halo of pink sheen. I'm going to go ahead and compare Kujaku to some similar inks, but again, take these with a grain of salt. They're, the way they're showing up on my screen is not that accurate. Now, anytime I talk about a darker teal or turquoise ink, lots of people mention Yamadori. And I have to agree, Yamadori is 
dark. It's got that pink sheen. It's a well-behaved ink. I can understand why this one is a favorite. Lamy Amazonite or Amazonite is seems a little bit darker. I, Kujaku looks a little lighter here in the lighter bits and it might be a bit brighter, but they have they appear to be very similar in their ratio of blue to green. Ferris Will Press Bluegrass Velvet is another very similar ink. I don't see quite as much of the sheen on this one though. Aldous Huxley has more sheen and it's more saturated, but again, very similar ratio of blue to green. Israel's Zablau by Ackerman is my personal favorite of this shade of ink, but they are very similar. But it is a quite a bit drier ink, I found, so I prefer it in much wetter nibs. Okay, I'm going to show Kujaku along with Sioro and Shinryoku. Kujaku is a bit more blue. Sioro has a little bit more green in it and comes across a little bit more murky and dusky. And then Shinryoku looks very green compared to those two. And I'm going to show what Kujaku looks like along with Kampeki, which is quite a bit brighter. And Sukiyo, which is probably my favorite blue. And Shinkai, which is also a very nice blue-black. I took a writing sample that I did on Rhodia and submerged it in water for 10 minutes. Now, this writing sample was allowed to set for two days. Normally, I just let my writing sample set for an hour or two. But this one set for two days. And you can see there's still a nice, very legible bit of blue left behind, but quite a bit of the blue still spread out. All right, back to the Tomoe River writing sample. On the heavier bits, I'm still not seeing any bleed through, though it is showing through this thin paper a bit. Not a lot of difference in the color between the drier, finer nibs and the wetter, broader nibs. Sometimes in the drier nibs, the ink will look a bit faded and not as attractive, but I'm not noticing that with Kujaku. All right, if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.